Hello again, O oh ethereal ladies and gents, and welcome back to the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and uh, I think I ran out of uh, ways to insult myself in this a long time ago, so <laughs> here we go again. Uh, right now, I think the main attraction is the Brazilian War for Independence, conducted against Toulouse by Toulousean Brazil, which has involved Gascony and, uh, well, I believe that is Gascony and Toulousean Brazil and perhaps uh, a couple others. Oh, only Great Britain and uh, all of his colonies as well. <laughs> all of those aforementioned are fighting Toulouse, Nitra, and Silesia. Silesia, who is dealing with peasants. So, uh, I have a funny feeling that the Toulousian colonies will be gaining independence, and as a matter of fact, there's a peace deal. Languedoc, the 21 development province ceded to Gascony, as well as Roussillon. Uh, Spain might come knocking for that one in the future. That is technically part of Iberia, as is Laborde. I, I've never quite understood why that was the case. I guess this is Basque country? That would make some sense. Regardless, I feel like it's part of modern France today, and the borders look so much better with that. Anyways. <laughs> So, is Toulousean Brazil free? They are still in the war, so Toulouse managed to piece out Gascony, or Gascony sold out Toulousean Brazil. Uh, something happened there, but uh, Toulouse still at war with mostly Great Britain, but also her errant colonies. Though, I mean, Nitra could very well march its army over and help them out. I don't know. Assuming it is an independence war, which I am about 99% sure it is. Well, would you look at that? Uh, Toulouse loses simply by virtue of not occupying Toulousean Brazil's capital. Though, uh, okay. So, Toulouse was looking to colonize a few more provinces for their, uh, for their guy down here, but, well... They're more than happy to occupy those as well. Looks like they've finished in the meantime. That is actually a, a fun little situation, because assuming this was still being colonized by Toulouse when this independence war started, Toulousean Brazil occupies it. And, uh, you know, obviously this colonial nation is at war with its overlord, so what are you going to do with those provinces in the region? You know, that, that's just one of those things that you, you wouldn't really be looking for, and, you know, just having it stay under Toulouse makes the most sense, but I just find it cool that uh, that, that situation can happen, and uh, that Paradox had something prepped for it, even if it was so simple. Regardless, uh, there's Great Britain. They've gotten a small army over here, but uh, they're small and they're ready to occupy and besiege including Toulouse's new capital of Provence. Where have we seen something like that before? I would submit that uh, if Orléans were to go to Gascony, these borders would look so much better. But uh, Austria not going to give away any land. He's the emperor, damn it. Poland has been pieced out and actually has some territory back from Russia. They have taken, I'm pretty sure they had uh, Mosers before, but I believe that they have taken Polotsk, Vitebsk, and Mogilev from Russia in that war. Damn. And I really need to watch my mouth. I'd rather this be as uh, family friendly as I can manage. I mean, <laughs> not using the worst words, of course, but still. Looks like Russia is at war with Kiva, which might have uh, prompted that early exit from that war against uh, Poland. Though I feel like Russia could pretty easily handle them both. Uh, are they out Tech? Tech 21? Uh, Kiva's on Tech 20. Persia's equal with them. I know Tech 22 is the modern one. Uh, though I guess ideas definitely start playing a part again. Has Persia taken any other good looking ideas? Nothing else military, aside from offensive. Whereas Russia has finished quantity. Like, I'm sure they have hundreds of thousands of 
manpower. They still have 140k manpower and their force limit is 292. What are you doing, Russia? Like, yeah, Persia and Kiva, that's a pretty tough front to fight against. But... I, I just don't know. I mean, worked out quite well for Poland. This is clay that would usually be Poland's in, uh, you know, or rather the Commonwealth's in uh, your usual EU4 game, so good for them to get it back. Uh, I'm sure they'd have liked to get Smolensk back as well, but <laughs> you gotta take what you can. So we'll have Denmark partially occupied by Cologne. What is going on there? Oh, pressure grew too much and triggered their coalition more. That coalition has been sitting there waiting for at least a couple episodes now, and uh, the Day of Reckoning has come for the Space Marines. We also see some Bohemian Separatists. By the way, uh, Prussia had, maybe not all that quietly, but they had taken uh, all of Bohemia, aside from Prague and Morava, in those wars that gave them that coalition, and... Uh, they're more than happy to just stay out of the way. <laughs> you know, try to take back uh, the stuff for their ally. Good good call, Prussia. You're full siege, buddy. <laughs> You're, uh... Wh where do they actually have their capital? Probably in Berlin. That, I should have looked at that. Your capital siege down. Y your country is full siege. Aside from Marriott, or Ermland. <laughs> actually, Prussia's only on Tech 20. Was my seeing Tech 22? Well, hmm. That's definitely a good way to uh, put down some Space Marines, is uh, fighting them while they're two techs down on some people. Or from some people. Yeah, Cologne has Tech 22, Trier has Tech 22, and has actually been unioned by Brabant at some point. Is Nevers still around? They have been so very stubborn. I'm surprised Brabant hasn't eaten them, since they're only allied with Aiden. What is it with these alliances? And uh, also, there's Odiev going for Germion. Looks like Sicily's helping out, too. Or perhaps Germion going for Odiev? Prob probably not. They're still guaranteed by Persia. Yep, Odiev in Conquest of Silistria. Had to, uh, had to expect that they wouldn't let yet another Turkish invasion uh, take too much of a hold over here. Though those have just kind of happened and then petered out and then happened again from yet another of the Balix. Also, Maria has continued to expand. They've taken Euboia. They are now at war with Epirus Crete and have called in Venice to help them out there. Really, uh, I don't know how Venice has retained that identity. They've been without the city of Venice for a long time now. Might call this just the former trading republic of the Eastern Adriatic or something. I mean, excellent king, Marino Grimani, a monarch that anyone would love to have. But their heir, Mose. I mean, he's okay. A 4-2-1. There are worse seven monarch point rulers. The city of Visoki, of course, no longer in a trading league, uh, also allied with Venice, and has made itself a principality. They have a Vojvoda due to their culture, that probably being Serbian. Seeing all the, the trading cities, you know, none of them have been eminently successful, but. Uh, we saw the city of Cremona, we saw the city of Finnmark, Milan finally got eaten by the way. Uh, you know, we saw the city of Viborg, we saw Pirkan Ma. <laughs> you know, Visoki, just the latest in uh, fine partition tradition, I suppose. And is Egypt helping Germion? No, Egypt's just jumping on him. In the... Ah, Karaman is jumping on him. Harmony's conquest of Kutaya, Kutiaon. 
So yeah, Charmion dealing with uh, some pretty high pressure from both sides here, though uh, that's quite a take for Karaman being able to see Jadirn before Odiev and his alliance could. I mean, Odiev doesn't have any fort siege down at this point, despite their war having been on longer, I think. I mean, they can still get in here and... There's no fort in Constantinople. Why is there not a fort in Constantinople? That's just wrong. Chermion, uh... Keeping their capital in Kutayan. Or, uh, K Kutaya, so... And Russia is feeling the hurt from, uh... From Kiva and Persia. A lot of their stuff is occupied, though. I'm not... Okay. So, yeah, there's, uh... Those are the two main segments of the Persian army, I think. Not seeing any others. Persia has not really been up, built up to its force limit. Looks like Russia is responding by going for Urgench, though. That being Kiva's capital. Wouldn't be nice for them if they were to have that siege down. Persia retaliating by going for Moscow, and they already have 71%. They had to have gotten there just recently, but there it is. Bing bang, Moscow is sieged down. I mean, if Kiva is able to peace out, you know, they could get some good territorial gains for themselves. Uh, take these in the Nogai area. Uh, could defend Kipchak a little bit more. That's a province that you want don't want taken by Russia in the future. They could give land back to Theodoro. I'd given them up for lost, but, well, not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily have to be true. And goodbye, Epirus. They've uh, been around for a while, survived a lot longer than a lot of their compatriots did, although those have since been brought back to life. Uh, I mean, surviving even on Corfu for a little bit, but that now over, Epirus and Thessaly taken by Venice. And there's the piece from Odiev. That would be all of Bulgaria ceded to them, and uh, yet another... Balik ready to fall. Yet another Balik that controls Constantinople ready to fall. Karaman has slowly worked its way back up to relevance and uh, into the best position on the Anatolian Peninsula. The alliance with Egypt helping out there, but the time, you know, the, they just timed their attack well. And there's a retina jumping on the corpse. Poor Jermion. First Saruhan, now Jermion. Mentessa was pretty strong at 1.2. They're dead. It's just been... <laughs> Musical Balix, I suppose. <laughs> uh, looks like Russia is maybe starting to push back against Kiva, Persia a little bit. I mean, Moscow is still sieged. And uh, Persia also occupied Smolensk, Kaluga, and Tver for their pains, but, uh, I mean, what's the war score here? Uh, they're at Neg 32, and Kiva really wants to get uh, these Russians off their capital. Yep, there's the war done. So Dagestan, formerly a Persian possession, has been given back to them. Kiva appears to have taken, uh, perhaps, Shandik? Uh, no, they already have a territorial core there. I, I don't think Kiva got that much out of that war. It might have been just Dagestan to Persia and money. The AI seems to be rather unwilling to take territory in some of these wars, unless their name is the Ottomans. Oh, and there's Venice trying to hop on the attack Germion train as well. Am I right? Yep. Venice going for a Adirn yet again. I think the last time they attacked it, it was against the city of Burgas. Regardless, that's where Jermion's army is, and they do have a three-star general. That's a 6-3-3. Fire definitely at the point in the game where it's fairly strong. So, uh, see if see if Venice can do things here. The Emperor is dead. Long live Emperor Austria yet again. Gelray actually made an elector as well. Uh, right now, Austria without an heir. Seems like they start, or rather, they have a female heir. And uh, 
they appear to have... Well, they've lost the Habsburg. They now have the De La Tour du Pin dynasty, which I believe is Tolucian. <laughs> Gascony have the Rurikoviches. Spain, you still have Trastamaras? You do. Still have Lancasters up in Great Britain. I don't want to see the diplomat mode. Great Britain wants all of this. Uh, Jaure has... Uh, Jaure is a republic. Brabant? Brabant has von Wissusen. Prussia still have Hohenzollerns? Yeah, they have Rurikoviches as well. Does Russia still have Rurikoviches? Oh my gosh! No, no, would you look at that peace deal. So, Kiva gives Dagestan back to Persia, makes them release Perm and Sheridan, or, uh, you know, Tr Tritsko and uh, Sheridan, and makes them give Shenkursk, Tikvin, and Ingermanlin back to Novgorod. <laughs> Those are just... You're, you're just... It's like tickling a giant. Ugh. Aretna has taken the remainder of Jermion's Anatolian territory. They are now reduced to only Adirn and Constantinople. Adirn besieged by the combined forces of Venice and Maria. And uh, where is that lovely three-star general? Where'd he go? Where's Jermion's? Where's Jermion's army? Also, what do you have dealing with some Cossacks? Seems like the Cossacks always spawn in Bessarabia, don't they? I mean, Bessarabia, a very common Cossack revolter state that uh, happens when Poland isn't attentive enough to Moldavia in the early game. It's another three star general. A 4451 for. Sorry, a 4451 for Silesia, which is labeled as a two star, and then a 4434 for Austria. Those siege pips do make a difference in how the game treats your generals. And Germion has just been pieced out. Venice saying, eh, you know what, I actually don't want this. Actually, no. Venice losing. Being forced to spit Epirus out again. <laughs> Hello again, Epirus. And also release Montenegro. <laughs> oh, it's a trauma conga line for you, this poor, poor state. But uh, Maria happy with it. They're saying, you know, this territory that went to Epirus should have been ours anyways. We'll take that. Thank you very much. At least they're having fun. Sorry, just bumped my mic. I'm using a headset. That's why there's a lot of background stuff in this. I cannot quite afford a noise blocking mic at this point. If I somehow manage to grow a channel or a following of some sort, I'll uh, definitely try to get rid of those issues in the future. And while we weren't looking, Lubick decided uh, to eat most all of Denmark's homeland, including that province I wanted them to take in the first place, that being Sjælland. And there are Danes out there shaking their heads at my pronunciation. Uh, Denmark does still have Ostjylland, though, so there's that. And the Zovia's still alive in Gotland, and they're, they were being besieged by... Uh, by Austria, I think. Or maybe not. I mean, Poland actually gave them back the province of Ostroda. Prussia definitely uh, hurt a lot by that coalition war. Only made to give Bude Jovice back to Bohemia, but I believe they were forced to out outright release Saxony, which I believe Austria has jumped on. Austria and Poland have been good allies this, uh, at least recently in this campaign. Uh, I'm surprised Poland uh, Poland took Mimel from Prussia, but didn't take any more of this land. You know, you think they might want to take maybe Danzig? It is kind of the jewel of the Baltic, but uh, it's, it's Prussia's choice. Definitely bit off more than they could chew. Who's replaced them as a great power? Gascony! Gascony has joined the great power list with Prussia being knocked down a few pegs. So welcome back to them. They must be just barely ahead of Morocco.
And now we see Croatia moving troops down here. Who are you fighting? They... well, Maria must have parlayed their aid into this. And would you look... Maria, you're lovely. You can actually siege down these forts. And there's Corfu gone. There's Epirus and Thessaly taken by Maria. You know, if they were to maybe... Oh, hey, that alliance is gone. So, if Maria were to successfully fight Venice and take Castoria and Macedonia... Uh, Macedonia, or Ma Macedonia. Also, I didn't manage to get Naxos. Uh, and also, Sakiz, Chios, has gone to Epirus at some point as well. This is a Balkan boogaloo over here. Regardless, if Maria takes enough of these provinces, they might be able to form Greece. Matter of fact, oh, why not? I'm going to tag switch into Maria. Oops. Uh, MRE. MOE. That's Maria. I like their flag. So, Maria... Could form Greece. They would need... They have Epirus Court. They'd need Naxos. So, yeah. Maria attacks uh, Aiden, and they are rivaled. And Aiden is only allied with Nevers. We could see Greece formed by Maria. That would be impressive. <laughs> Sorry for the little bit of a delay there. Just I was I was curious to see uh, what it would take to form that. And while I'm checking, Oman has taken Mecca and Medina, has just erased Hejaz and taken all of the provinces in the Arabian Peninsula, plus Tajura from Ethiopia. Let's see what it would take for them to form Arabia. If they even can, as an Ibadi country. They would need... oh, they'd need Alexandria. They'd need Cairo, they'd need... okay, yeah, so... Seems like Arabia is definitely treated in the bigger sense. It's not Saudi Arabia, it's Islamic world Arabia. Yeah, so that's not likely to happen, as Oman has been uh, enjoying Egypt's support for a long time. But, uh, I will say again, stranger things have happened. Perhaps sharing a border will break that alliance? I wouldn't call it likely as Oman, having taken Tajura, still retains its expansion route down here into Ethiopia, and perhaps later Kilwa, who has also taken some provinces from Ethiopia. I believe these four were taken in the last war. Ethiopia has been stuck without allies for probably a long time. And would you look at this reversal? It is Nkor who has gained the upper hand in the Great Lakes region, Rwanda separated and now in two pieces, only on Tech 12, Core on 13, Burundi on 13. Rwanda really looked to be the winner over there for a while, but uh, oh how the tables have turned. Kilwa has let Sofala be after taking the rest of their coastline. Not sure, I mean, eh, live and let live, I suppose. And Odiev is at war with Toulouse. Toulouse, did you anger another one of your colonies? No? Is the Pope wanting Avignon back? No, it's... Uh, okay, so uh, people have started taking Diplotech 23. That is the gascon Toulousian nationalist war. And uh, Toulouse has simply called in its allies... Nitra, Sardinia, and Gelre. And Gascony has called in his allies. Brazil, Odiev, Austria, maybe? Austria, are you involved? Nah. But uh, more than happy to call in Odiev, who is kind of getting stomped by Nitra. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think their army might have been stack wiped. Tech 22 to Nitra's 22. 
Silesia is actually a Nitrin vassal. I wasn't aware of that. Venice. <laughs> oh boy. I hope these guys. Can, uh, I hope Maria can form Greece. Only being only allied with Croatia might make things a little iffy. That's a state that I'd like to see uh, hold down one of those. Uh, not very likely, but uh, strong alliances from one of the European majors, but perhaps not to be. Spain been doing. Spain is only allied with Sardinia, Holland, and has really just kind of kept to itself. I mean, they are the number one great power right now. Uh, Russia did lose quite a bit of land. I mean, that 31 development province up there uh, in that war against Cuba and Persia. But, one, I mean, I'm sure these provinces aren't awful either. Tikvin's 11, 9, that one's only 3. Oh, Shenkursk has a trading post. Novgorod gets that back and immediately plops a trading post on it, because they are still the Grand Republic. And they're still alive in 1688. That's uh, 200 extra years for them. Though, uh, not all of that in the city which they are named for. Oh, goodness gracious. So I think ODF might have gotten just peace out of that war. Yep. Yeah, they uh, they were done. Nitra just took them down. Nitra have good military ideas. They've taken defensive and offensive. Yep. Yeah, those will both help in, uh, in a lot of battles. It's been a while since I've looked in India, and the partition of Bahmanis continues apace. This time it is Nagaur hoping to get a bite out of him, and where in the world is Nagaur? So Nagaur is only reduced to two provinces. Were they called in by Malwa, perhaps? Who... they're fighting... No, nope, they're fighting an individual war against Bahmanis. That was risky. I mean, they just stack-wiped that, uh... That stack on their capital, but... Or, or was that... The, no. On Gorwar, but they also have peasants on their actual capital that they're not dealing with, and, uh... Trying to take land right now seems a risky business. We do see Baglana having been released from one of those wars, so welcome back to them. But uh, a lot of this occupied by Malwa, who is going to reassert themselves in uh, central India. Delhi is still the big guy in the region, though. Of course, a great power. And Morocco has now eclipsed Gascony in development. Though, should Gascony take any or all of this from Toulouse, that will change. See the mandate continuing to fall. That means it's still Emperor Jin, who has had three, four different rulers hold on to the mandate, uh, <laughs> including a regency council. And they're hemorrhaging mandate like everyone before them, and Kalka's, uh, Kalka's full occupied by Russia. Russia smarting after that uh, loss to Persia and Kiva looking to pick on somebody uh, a, li a bit smaller than his own size. And yeah, the Manchu separatists. Manchurian separatists enforcing their demands over here on Buryatia. So we do have Manchu spawning, though not as a... Uh, they weren't formed by anybody. They were spit out by separatists. And they're actually one of Jin's two tributes. Chahar, the other one, being right to the north of him. Oh, things are fun over here. Korea has taken back all of the land on the Korean Peninsula. Good for them. Uh, and has recovered a lot of what they had earlier in the game when they were a great power. Japan has continued to be rather isolationist. I mean, I, last time we looked at them, they were actually still open doors. But, I mean, they haven't even attacked Ainu, for goodness sakes. Because Ainu is their tributary state and has been for a while. I knew that. The uh, Siberian tribes up here have continued to just live and let live. 
and that would be the timer. It is now 1690, we're almost to the 18th century, and uh, who knows what that will bring. For now though, it is time to let this end, so thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching, I've been Paragon Saber, I hope to see you next time.